What is evidence-based medicine? Evidence-based medicine requires the integration of the best research evidence with our clinical expertise and our patients' unique values and circumstances. This Venn diagram illustrates e each of these components. The ordering of each of these components is important in most clinical decisions. Our current paradigm puts patients' preferences and actions as being the most important component in making a clinical decision, followed by the patient's clinical state and circumstances, and lastly by the research evidence. And finally, our clinical expertise tempers all these individual components to help us make a decision about what we should do for this individual patient. Let's look at each of these components individually. Patient's preferences. When two patients are confronting the same clinical decision, they are looking at the same information, weighing the same benefits and adverse effects, but often they come to two different decisions. This is because they've had different experiences in life. They have different values. They have different risk taking. Um, they may have different insurances and abilities to pay. Their family influences may be very different. Each one's individual willingness to take medications might be different. All this kind of stuff leads to a preference that an individual patient might have. Their actions are often different than their preferences. We all would like to be healthier. We'd like to exercise more, but we don't. We don't eat as good of a diet as we, we ought to. We might drink too much alcohol. We might smoke. So while we prefer to be healthy, sometimes our actions show that we do things different than what we prefer. The clinical state and circumstances. The clinical state is the patient's other comorbidities, the medications that they're on. All these things will influence decisions for other medical problems. The clinical circumstances tends to be our practice setting. Our decision on using some new technology will be very different if we're in a small rural setting versus an academic tertiary care medical center in a large city. If the patient's in an ICU, our clinical decision making is going to be different than if they're healthy and at a routine primary care visit. Finally, the research evidence. What we're talking about here is the most valid, so methodologically sound, and clinically relevant evidence we can find for this particular question that we have. Now, people who criticize evidence-based medicine often say that evidence-based medicine proponents only care about randomized control trials. Well, for many of the things we do, there are no randomized control trials. So we have to look for the best available evidence, which might be an observational study. It might be a bench research study only. It might be expert opinion only. The spirit of this is that we find the best available evidence. And once you become um, more skilled in evidence-based medicine, you'll actually be able to personalize that evidence. You'll be able to adapt a research study to your own individual patient who you're considering making a decision on. Many of our patients are sicker than patients who are enrolled in studies. And on average, the greater your risk of some outcome, the greater benefit you will receive from a therapy. If your patient is healthier than those in a study, on average, they tend to receive less benefit of an intervention than those patients in the study. And there are ways to adapt the study um, information um, to be more patient-specific and, re and reflect this finding. And finally, our clinical expertise will tie this all together. We have to have good clinical skills. We have to be good diagnosticians and history takers. We have to make the right diagnosis. Doing all these other things, at being skilled at finding a study and appraising it and assessing patient preferences doesn't really make a difference if we have the wrong diagnosis. So we have to be good doctors first. The other skills that our clinical expertise takes into account is being able to assess the patient's preferences, um, really taking into account where we're working and the patient's other comorbidities, and balancing all these things together into making a decision about what we should do, not just what we could do.